We're gonna do a bearing swap on Brady's XR. Um, typically I would just clean this whole area of the axle with a soft toothbrush, especially if you're not actually going to change the bearings, then uh, I would be real careful. You don't wanna push any dirt past the seal into the bearing. So we're gonna change the bearings. We really don't care, but I don't wanna get a whole bunch of dirt in the bear or in the motor. So I definitely clean the motor and the whole outside where you're gonna remove the screws for the cover and everything like that. Hit it with an airline and blow it all off so that uh, you're not opening a filthy board and dumping the dirt. This looks like float fest dirt in here too. It sure into, is. <laughs> uh, into the motor. So that's where we are for right now. So we're just taking off everything yeah. as if we would a tire change. Yeah, basically. Uh, if anybody's serious about working on their board and want to take their board apart regularly and not strip these little tiny fasteners, which appear to be a little bit stripped as is, this is the best thing you can ever do. Get a good screwdriver. So as I've been told or like led to understand is if you torque on this thing, you'll develop some kind of a clicking thing where you misalign the motor against the hub. So when I loosen or tighten anything, I use the actual melt crate to distribute the force, not grabbing one side of the rail and pushing or twisting the shit out of it like the other side of the rail. So that's my little anal retentive tip for anybody that cares. You're going to be known as even more the bearing guy now after this video. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're the bearing guy. That float fest. I'm like, also the curve oh, guy. Oh, fuck, man. I want to be the curve guy, not the bearing <laughs> guy. The curve is way more fun. <laughs> okay, we'll call you the bearing guy, or the curve guy. <laughs> Okay, so what I like to do is hold on to this end here, right? Because we're gonna pull this out. Once we undo the cover, undo this first. Vice at home is a much better light. Oh, those are good and tight. That's a good sign. Mine are chronically loose. Oh, really? Yeah. You pretty much only take these off to change the bearings or um yeah this yeah that. exactly the only reason to undo these is to get up the bearings or open the motor up um i take my board apart probably once every four or five weeks during the summer and uh relock tight those things because they're always backing off that's where the clunk will come from a lot of times oh, okay if it's not your bearing clunk it's these are a little bit loose and this is actually sliding back and forth inside here you know what I mean? Good to know. Just a little yeah, bit. that makes that's sense. That's where you shift hard heel side and it goes clunk. Yeah, that's exactly what yeah. I'm having. But yeah. curious how tight these actually are. Yeah, I'm curious too. I've never even <laughs> messed with those. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, hey, that was good. That meant the lock site was still functioning there. So like this, and I use this to pin it down. And then if you have a wire um, wheel at home or anything like that, obviously it makes short work of this. Yeah, and we're just but, removing this so we can yeah. add more Loctite on. Basically, when we put back clean together. all the old Loctite out of there so the new Loctite has something to bond to, right? Removal bucket available anywhere buckets are sold. <laughs> <laughs> Coil this up inside here, put it in, holds the bucket or the tire nicely. Here, this dowel is the exact size of the axle. Can actually maybe use it to press the bearing out as well. I haven't gone that far, we have other stuff here, but use a nice soft dowel on the wooden axle and swing for the fences here. Now, the fun part is trying to get this flipped over and out of there before the magnet pulls the rotor back into the wheel. Like that. Like that. That's okay. And then this is the more fun part. Right. 
Oh, good. How's my motor look? I don't see any bare aluminum there. That's my worst fear. So this you can see right here, that future motion pinched that O-ring when they put your motor together. Huh. That's why it's shoved up against here and broken wow. and it disassembled itself. As far as I know, you can't buy these anywhere. This is probably a custom proprietary future motion part. We'll show the MacGyver method of encountering or how we fix that. And this uh, motor almost has 1500 miles on When you put it back there. So what's a good sign is I don't see anything here where the motor has been touching inside the wheel yeah. or anything like that. Um, on one of my boards, my XR, which had uh, just under a thousand hard miles of curbs and trails, you could actually see where the stator was starting to hit and touch and it was chipping the actual finish off of the magnet there. You do see a little teeny bit of scarring, so I think your bearings were enough that it was just letting it start. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. You can see here that there's little teeny nicks. So that clunk you were feeling was your bearings. Oh, that bearing sucks. I'm glad I'm changing it in time. Oh fuck, that bearing is yeah. That's what we're changing it <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now what we'll do is come over here and we'll press this bearing out and we'll get an actual idea of what we're dealing with. Now people don't have these tools, are there alternative ways they can pop the stuff out? Um, people can use hammers as a bearing guy. Don't use a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's not to say that you can't get it done with a hammer and maybe some stuff around your house, um, but installing a bearing with a hammer is never my first choice. It makes a bearing guy cringe. Yeah, it does. <laughs> So, um, but at the same time, I have installed bearings with hammers in my youth, if you will, um, and life goes on. So. so this is the removal of the current bearing? <laughs> oh, bad, oh eh? god, that's can gross. Spin. It's gross here. You uh, wow. actually the other side off. You're just putting that on to hold it. Yeah, just to. Um... Oh, I see. Yeah, just so we can hold it in the mice, right? We could clamp onto that nice aluminum surface, but I don't use hammers on bearings, so why start doing that? so paranoid just about picking it up. Like, don't fucking drop it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your smile will quickly evaporate <laughs> as it hits the fucking floor. <laughs> I don't know, I thought he knew what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> just slow, even pressure. Don't be forceful. Try to be patient. Not one of my strong suits, but... There we go. So it looks like the O-ring is in good shape, actually. Yeah, good, perfect. All right, this comes out through here. You gotta pass the square through first and then pass the round part through. And that bearing is in nowhere near as bad a shape as the other one. That one is always what would seem to be in. Is that, is that the heel side one where you're kind of going for, they're putting uh, pressure It's the from... closed end oh, heel okay. side would yeah. be a, um, stance you know what I mean yeah, what have uh, to do with your stance nothing more yeah uh, but the closed end of the the bearing is the one that takes all of the hits this it, this actually can move and this is what allows everything to move so the odds of this bearing getting damaged before the closed side bearing is way way down Yeah, that one's bad too. The that's what's called so it's thrust axial and radial. So that's the thrust load on there, and this inner race is moving back and forth. You can't see it in the video, but yeah, I can feel I can it with it. my fingers, and it's it's gross. 
the next thing to do is have a look in here and notice that there's a lot of dirt in here. This is what we were trying to clean out of here with the toothbrush and everything so that we didn't open that up and dump all the bearing or dirt into there. But regardless, you want to make sure that the bottom of the bearing seat here has no debris in it and will allow the bearing to fully seat evenly. If there's a little bit of anything under there, the bearing is going to sit cockeyed and it's not going to pinch the rotor properly to the specifications that somebody at Future Motion designed. So we'll do that on that one, as well as this one. You can see here, again, look at all the stuff on the inside, the whole bearing seat. If we just shoved a new bearing in there right now, there'd be crud all underneath the bottom of the bearing. So we're going to put the SKF 61907 2RZ, um, arguably the best bearing money can buy without having something specially made. Uh, NSK is also a good quality bearing and I've seen NSKs in some of the boards from Future Motion uh, as well as I've seen the standard $5 made in China bearing, <laughs> cheapest you can get. Okay, so... How many miles do you think it's going to last me? I'm not a drop guy. Oh, uh, <laughs> I think you had a couple thousand quality miles in there without blinking. Yeah. My guesstimation. So when you put these in, you want to try to seat it and feel the whole thing kind of fit flat. There's a little chamfer in here. So if you jam it in, you're going to deform the metal. Is it bi-directional? Like, can you put it in either way? Bearing, it no, it doesn't matter. Okay. No, absolutely not. So put it in there. You can feel it square up. It sits nice and flat and it wants to be pushed in flat. So just get one of these trusty things and sit around your house and uh... a trusty jig a jig <laughs> press on a press. You guys have one of these right beside your food presser in the kitchen, don't you? <laughs> so I always give it a little press and then what you want to do is rotate this a couple times and make sure that everything is nice and even. So again, at home they could use like a rubber mallet or something to kind of softly put The thing in is, is you never want to install a bearing by the inner race because if you press on the inner race of the bearing, you're pressing the inner race against the outer race and you're using the actual cage inside the bearing and the construction of the bearing to force the bearing into the hole. So we press the bearing in by the outer race, I press the whole entire bearing as a whole. So that is critical. Do not press by that. Okay. We remove the bearing by the inner race because yeah. we're throwing the bearing away. Gotcha. <laughs> that That's makes the sense. only way. But I would really never want to press a bearing out by the inner race and then turn around and press it back in there because these bearings are not designed to handle a thrust load. They're designed to handle a radial load with a minor amount of thrust in there. So bearing lesson. Now I had one here that was was just like it was fucking perfect. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So now you can see this one is actually the perfect size to touch the outer ring. Right. Right. So now we can press on the bearing and not press on the plate and make sure that it's fully seated. I'm sure it is, but So people watching this, could they go to a bearing shop and ask them to <laughs> like help use their tools and whatnot or they just got to know someone like sean nelson oh well I mean, <laughs> any machine shop may or may not want to take this on um yeah. just like anybody they probably will be a little bit hesitant about working on a proprietary product that they can't barely buy replacements for so yeah um that's my concern <laughs> as <Yeah>. well <laughs> <laughs> So um, I imagine that would be even more pertinent for somebody that knows nothing about the one wheel. Because what we're doing now is we're going to install this one in here. And this is a magnet. This is steel. So I sort of have to, and this takes a bit, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to do. All right. But we'll get back at you after we do this together. Okay. So the first thing to do. I'll keep heading on until you tell me when. First thing I'm doing is lining up the tire to make sure that the press is actually down in the center of it here. Everything has to be spaced out properly. 
So now that it's in the approximate area where I want it to be, again, the same little chamfer exists down in the bottom of this hole. You want to seat the bearing in there, make sure it's nice and square and flat. If it feels like it's going in crooked, it is. Don't force it, turn around, pop it back out and try to reseat it and really be patient with this one. go in nice and smooth it sort of slipped down in there I didn't feel it cockeye or jam and I didn't need an unreasonable amount of force to get it moving and keep it moving and once it started I like to just rotate it make sure that you're kind of evenly applying the force all the way around if this thing happens to be a little bit misaligned and it's pressing that way I don't want to shove bearing in the whole way that way and basically exacerbate that Right, for lack of a better term. Um, so I think that feels pretty good. It's nice and seated. Nice. I'm getting better at this. That was easier than the other two times. Now, can they buy those bearings on uh, Amazon or anything like that? Uh, you can buy them anywhere. Um, Jeffrey Rosenzweig actually showed me that there's quite a market for uh, counterfeit bearings and SKF bearings definitely happens to be one of them. So having said that, I would recommend going to an actual bearing place that you can physically buy them from and spend the money. Um, you get what you pay for in the bearing world. $5 bearing is a five dollar bearing <laughs> this is the most expensive bearing that i can buy and some people might think that's a little bit crazy but i cannot buy this but i can buy bearings to protect this so yeah. that is the logic behind all of this <laughs> makes a lot of sense <laughs> that's all there is to it okay what are you about to do here all right so pte thread sealant tape right teflon tape pipe tape thread tape whatever you want to call it so I'm just going to make an O-ring. Uh, again, credit Jeffrey Rosenzweig with uh, telling me to try this when uh, I had O-ring issues as well. Ah, and he said I couldn't find anything and I wasn't surprised by that at all, to be honest. You know, my vape has a, an O-ring that might fit over there actually. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else said he got a 22 millimeter uh, O-ring. Obviously the diameter of the O-ring yeah. um, is hugely relevant in that, but he said he soaked it in hot water and stretched it over and he wasn't sure if it was um, damaged on the way in or not. Um, just like most of the future motion people are as we've seen. So uh, that might be viable as well. wrap it around twice or uh around. well basically you want to have it a bit proud and then it's sort of pliable so you can almost smooth it down oh, in yeah, there and then get it to stick to itself and then just cut it and then we cross our fingers hope to do is get this to stick to itself and sort of fit down in the groove. You can see how it was quite proud and then when I run my fingers around it it sort of shoves it down yeah, into it looks there. Pretty flush in there. But now. there's still if you look on the side you can still see that the o-ring is proud and that's basically all it is is just to sit between the inner race of the bearing surface and this and more or less not allow dust to pass through. Yeah. Trying to get this to pass through here without letting the magnetic field of this and this crash the shit out of it. 
uh, and deflect this and tear the o-ring like future motion is proving to be so this efficient this is where i come in or no no nope. all right <laughs> that seemed to go pretty smooth. Not bad, not bad yeah. at all. I'm happy with that. So yeah. come over here. Uh, you wanted to see the clearance between them. Oh, yeah, There's hardly any. It's obviously not Got sitting. Here. Yep, first Loctite on all the clean screws. And so what you'll see here is there's a little bit of a gap between the plate and this so this still needs to come down on the shaft a bit this shaft seems to be tighter than the other two i've dealt with uh, the other two the bearing just slipped on there um, so while it might be a little bit harder to assemble it might actually be better um, overall in terms of the bearing not as easily spinning on the shaft you know what i mean it's almost like it's a bit of a press fit yeah um, so the reason I mentioned that is when you put all these in here, you don't want to tighten just one side down and cockeye that whole thing. You want to tighten it in a star pattern. Kind of like try changing to, a tire. Exactly. <laughs> you want to bring it down evenly and do not jam it on any one side. So once you got them started. Okay, put back on it. Every bolt. Every bolt. Yeah. Even these ones you should do just for vibration as the, small as they are and as easy they are to strip. I'm sort of sometimes wonder if you shouldn't. Um, they're not critical in that they don't actually affect the mechanics of the board, but they're so easy to strip. And I wish we had the torque specs for all of these bolts, but that doesn't seem to be something that... If anybody's ever clamping this, make sure this isn't like this. <laughs> right. <Steven. laughs> we, we, we see that I'm always careful with this to align it inside there and make sure that it's never actually being pinched and then I'm always grabbing the actual hub. <laughs> Someone will catch that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he will. <laughs> What you looking for? I was just dropping something around. All right, so here we are, moment of truth. I'm now behind the camera, and Brady or Bradley, pardon me. I'll we'll get that figured out one of these days. Oh, it initialized. Oh, it works. Uh oh. <laughs> the V1 sensor. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's smooth. Oh man, it feels like a different board. Wow, that is like very, very noticeable difference. It really is. It it it's not so much a function of how good those bearings are, but how bad the bearings that were in there were, and how used to them you were. It feels smoother than my brand new one I just got. It, yeah, like and I would agree. It's definitely a better bearing, and. Um, wow. Yeah, it really is smooth. When you get up to your uh, higher speeds, you're really going to notice just how smooth it really is. There we have it. Boom. Thank you. No problem. My pleasure. Awesome.